Well, hello there and welcome to another Wi-Fi Sheep tech video with me, Tom. Now, this is going to be a bit of a special video today as it's going to be the first public demonstration of Nanogangs. What's Nanogangs, I hear you cry? Well, Nanogangs has been a bit of a pet project for me for the past two years and it's my own 8-bit computer game. You see, I run a fleet of 1981 and 1986 BBC Micro and Master computers and I take these out to schools, colleges, universities, usually as part of the Raspberry Pi Jam uh, computer events which are all based around the Raspberry Pi uh, computer board. So naturally I have these machines and I demo a lot of the software and classic games from the 1980s but it's always been a sort of a passion of mine and it seemed the logical thing to do was to write my own game, have my own software that I could show on the machines and the result was Nanogangs. Uh, I've actually cheated a little bit today. I'm actually running on BBEM on the Mac. It's just a bit easier to get the video signal, get a high quality video output uh, using its inbuilt recorder feature. Uh, I kind of show you how the game does work fully on original uh, hardware. We're emulating, it's designed to run on the BBC Micro Model B. That was a 6502 MOS Technologies based computer with 32K of RAM, and the whole game is actually written in. Basic 2. The reason for this was that Nanogangs has a bit of an educational use. It's good to go and show in schools and colleges how to actually program and you could make games. Keeping it written in basic and not switching to the native 6502 assembly language means that it can be ported to other platforms such as Raspberry Pi without needing to rewrite all the assembly language. So we've kept it at interpreter level with the basic language. Uh, that does mean it is forward compatible Brandy Basic and of course ARM Basic on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, so that's kind of a, a key level for the project. Also, it's kind of trying to build a game, the sort of limited framework of the BBC Micro, where you just got no memory, left, right or centre. Anyway, let's have a look. OK, so before I start, we're just going to have a quick look at the catalogue, the disk. So you can see uh, this is a, a virtual SSD disk image and you see all the various files loaded. Um, Nanogangs uses quite a lot of different types of files from program file, boot directories, and uh, player save data files. Uh, because of the limited amount of memory, it's not possible to load all this into one program. So what it has to do is a chain command and load little bits of program in and make up one larger sort of matrix program, if you like. So we can all shuffling code in and out as it's required so we're not filling up the 32K of RAM constantly. So without further ado, we'll make a start of the program. So to do that, we'll do a shift break. And that then loads as if it's loading off a disk. So I have an introduction. And then the first of the um, imported image splash screens. Version 0 0.11. So this is now two years old, this build. And I'm just trying to sort of snatch times I can, you know, program it in, uh, in a hectic schedule. And then here's the uh, sort of standing custom image. So I'll press any key to continue. And now we have these uh, menu screens. A lot of early 8-bit software, especially games, just had one opening splash screen. that You kind of like press A to do this, press B to do that, and it just went straight in to the game. With Nanogans, because it's a modern game written on old uh, technology. I wanted to incorporate things that we now sort of want as standard, so uh, or expect as standard. Uh, so things like the, the splash screens, the menuing, that kind of thing. So we have menu options. So we credit, so we go back to that splash screen, exit, we'll exit. Uh, extras and controls don't do anything in the moment because I haven't got around to sorting that out. But uh, so we'll say new game. I'll we'll hit return, and now we have slots to set up a new a new player. So it is uh, the filing system has four, as you can see, four empty slots available. So we're going to start with a new game, and now asks for a name. So uh, one nice feature of this game, which I've incorporated quite recently, is the ability to actually build your own character. So you can create a nano gang alien creature yourself, and then that's going to be your player for the game. So I'm uh, going to be really creative. Name Fred. Fred and the Nano Gang. Why not? So now it's going to ask for colour. So it wants to know the colour of the shell. So we'll give Fred, uh, you see the numbers down the bottom, so we'll say four for the shell. Face colour. Um, I think yellow. 
so we say free for yellow. Then asks, is that okay? So you see we have a little preview of uh, what our Nana Gang is going to look like. So we say yes, that's fine. And there we go, it now loads into the first level. So we're using the arrow keys and space for jump. You notice there's some um, primitive sound at the moment. I don't really know musical sound that much, so I've kind of just been a few beeps and um, noises. But you'll notice the tone is different if you go back and forth. So it, it's considering basic is slow on the BBC Micro, it's it's been a challenge to try and keep the memory consumption down and get the speed of this up without resorting to assembly language. So once you move to the um, end of of the screen, um, it jumps to the next screen, and you can see there's a heart health icon that we can pick up. There we go. And now we have Nano Flea, which is one of the enemies. Uh, you might notice there's a bit of slowdown in frame rate. Um, this really is pushing it to have two sprites on the screen at one time. Um, it's trying to work out quite a lot of things. Also, bearing in mind that the BBC Micro doesn't actually have a built in sprite engine. So, without resorting to direct um, programming in the URL, UL, ULA, sorry. Um, we've had to uh, result to doing a few uh, software trickery to get these coloured sprites to even work just in basic. So I'm going to get underneath now, hopefully. There we go. On we go. You'll notice there's still a slight redraw glitch. It doesn't change at the. Um, it doesn't redraw me from the last level. There's a bit of block stuck in the sky, which I'll need to sort that out. There's a few bugs with this game. Uh, you notice we have a, another Nana Gang that we've got to rescue. So we'll just there we go. So we now n equals one. We've scored some more points, and there's the finish banner, which we'll jump to. And that is more or less it at the moment. You wouldn't think that's two years' work, but as I said, it's been on and off. Um, I have months where I've not not even touched it. So um, that's Nana Gangs at the moment. I'm really really pleased with how it's actually coming on. I uh, hope you enjoyed this technical demonstration. Release date for this game, well, the plan is to do a shareware version, which will be free and you can download for emulators. Uh, going to do a port to Risk OS for the Raspberry Pi at some point. And, of course, you'll be able to get a disc version, hopefully, which will have a few more bolt-on bolt features. There'll be a CD and a disc version with the original files for running emulators or original floppy disk, a uh, five and a quarter inch floppy for the actual BBC Micro, which is kind of my plan. I do have the discs, fresh discs, disk stock in stock ready to do that so uh, anyway i hope you've enjoyed this technical video please feel free to leave any comments questions etc uh, you can tweet me and follow me on twitter that's tom w underscore ident that's at tom w underscore ident and don't forget to subscribe if you like what you see thank you so much for joining us i'll have lots more coming up on wi-fi sheep in the near future bye for now